Well, Caroline, I'm, I'm so grateful for you to be here with me on the Social Entrepreneurship and Innovation Podcast. For folks who are unfamiliar, would you mind introducing yourself and, and sharing with us a little bit as to what it is that you do? Yeah, my name is Caroline Duell, and I am the founder and CEO of All Good. And All Good is a brand based in Morro Bay. We make organic and botanical body care products and mineral sunscreens. Hmm. And, and so uh, what I understand from, from doing some due diligence beforehand is that, that you're something of a reluctant entrepreneur in, in starting All Good or, or the origin stories. So I'd be curious if you wouldn't mind maybe expounding on that just a little bit. Well, I think that it comes from just the idea that um, I never really intended to start a business. It wasn't like, I have this great idea that's going to solve all these problems. Boom, <laughs> take it to market, get funded, go. That was not the way that it rolled. I was um, in in the early 2000s working as a climbing guide and a massage therapist. And with my partner, boyfriend at the time, now husband, was running a farm in West Marin, just north of San Francisco in California. And I came up with this salve. I have a background in herbal medicine and always was uh, interested in making herbal medicinal remedies for friends and for family and just as kind of like a hobby and things that, that, I, that I love to do to take care of people. And so I made this salve and um, out of this garden that we had installed on the farm that Ryan was partnering on and um, gave it away to clients and helped people who I was teaching crack climbing to to heal their knuckles and massage clients who had uh, issues with their skin and and then we started just kind of sharing it at the farmers markets and um, giving it away here and there and then that is what launched into a business is just mm -hmm. that people found some magic in it and found some real healing properties in it that uh, I knew existed but I just kind of never really knew how much of an impact it would have for people so the reluctance was just that I felt really deeply committed to the medicinal response to, to the, you know, to the healing response that the, that the salve has. And it, right out of the gate, I named it all good goop because it's just this like goopy product that you put on and it was just really all good. Kind of like the California vernacular <laughs> for so many things. Um, and, um, and so I always felt like that was the important part was, was really creating uh, you know, the, this authentic, sort of medicine, if you will. And um, the part that I didn't really feel attracted to was that that would start to develop into something that would be a business and that a business in my mind was something that inherently creates compromises and potentially mm -hmm. creates devastating kind of, you know, methods of supply chain extraction and destruction and all that. So I didn't believe in any of that. And I thought that I would have to compromise personal values or meet my herbalist ways to start a business. So when it started to grow, I kicked and screamed and finally got convinced that it was a business actually by a store owner. <laughs> I asked him just to hold the products at his store so people could come and pick it up. And he just literally <laughs> grabbed me by the shoulder and was like, don't you understand what's happening? You don't get it. So anyway, it's been in quite a journey since the beginning days, and I would still consider myself a reluctant business person because I'm always trying to find some other avenue when, you mm -hmm. know, I learned that these are the ways that business is done. I always just stop and question, is that the way that we really need to be doing it? Hmm. And, and so, I mean, I, I, right there, the reluctance is, is never completely faded, but what, what sort of had you uh, really commit to kind of diving in with both feet where you're like, all right, this, this is a business and <laughs> we're probably going to have to run it as such. It was a combination of that, that demand from people that I said, it was just this visceral response. I was getting people really loving what we were making and I didn't really charge I charged money at the farmer's market, but a lot of times I just gave it away. And so it became, uh, it just became obvious to me that the exchange of currency was simply that it didn't need, it didn't mean that I needed to become a worse person if I was going to accept money for something in exchange for a good, mm. something as simple as that. Right. <laughs> and I think that, that, that whole concept has gotten really blown out of proportion and um, with sort of the multinational corporate profits and all that stuff, if we got into that, but, um, but so it was, it was two things. It was both the consumer demand. And then secondly, I was still trying to get the product out there and recognizing that there needed to be a process for that. So re mm. retail stores, 
historically exist <laughs> for <laughs> the reason that you can uh, put products on their shelves and then people have a place to access them. Um, internet shopping wasn't really popular at the time, uh, certainly not what it is now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I recognized that it would be a, it would be a fun thing to dive into to, to really be, a, it was almost like a personal challenge also is how, how could I grow a business in a way that, that kept aligned with um, environmental and social responsibility in ways that I wanted to. Hmm. And, and, and so what, what do you think began to uh, lead to some of that, that initial traction? Because I think that's a, an, an extremely important inflection point in, I mean, one, just kind of moving products through farmer's markets and maybe small scale uh, natural product stores and things like that. But what kind of unlocked some maybe more significant, significant traction for y'all to, to get into more, I guess, widespread retailers? Yeah, what, there wasn't any magic to it. Honestly, we simply pounded the pavement. Nice. Um, and after I recognized there was a little bit of traction just locally up in Marin County in Fairfax, the Good Earth was our first retail account. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had moved down to San Luis Obispo County and um, picked up a couple of retailers there, Sunshine Health Foods and the local climbing shop, which is now called the Mountain Air. And so those two channels became the obvious places where people would want to find products like that I was making. So we literally uh, took our uh, biodiesel van on the road and <laughs> packed it up with products and our dog and our skis and our mountain bike and our climbing gear and just tripped around the Western US. And every town we came to, we'd find the health food store, the ski shop and the climbing shop. And I would just go meet the buyers or the owners and tell them I had this salve and some lip balms and as the product line grew, whatever I had, um, and just asked if they would want to carry it. And it was a, much more about relationship building than about sales because then we'd be like, well, and where's, where's the best, uh, you know, place where we can make a couple backcountry ski runs or where's a great mountain bike trail. And well, do you want to come with us? And we grew a lot of friendships and a lot of relationships that way, just um, simply by meeting people in stores and towns where we kind of matched our recreation. So even though there's, there's good in it, it was uh, purely self-serving really <laughs> it's just places to hook up with people and do cool things and then we happen to sell some products along the way and that's how we that's how we grew probably our first i don't know five or six hundred retailers was just store by store wow um and, and so <laughs> with that sort of origin uh, what is it like i mean now it's about 14 years right uh, 2006 yep. i think is what yep. I, I i found uh, what was it? Maybe it looks, I don't know if it looks the same way. Maybe y'all are, are growing the business the same way today. Um, but what, what is it like to, to be here in, in 2020 looking back uh, at to what all goods become? Mostly it's kind of a comedy show because I look back and think <laughs> that, you know, I used to print out the labels on one sheet and cut them with a paper cutter and then label them with clear packaging tape and then wrap them around the bottles and, um, so that's, I mean, that's like the classic kind of start of a business. And now we obviously have systems in place that take care of that. We have grown a team that is truly a family, just like such an incredible group of about 25 people that we work with that um, just open my heart on a daily level, just mm. daily basis of just the fun and the interactions and the creativity and the intelligence and, um, so that part is really different in that way that we, we have, you know, it's not just myself and Ryan or a couple other people. It's a, it's a group. And, um, and then I really like um, the sort of integration we've been able to have uh, in communities around the world and in particular um, in different sectors in the U S and, uh, and in particular, I think like Corey of, uh, of our B Corp family and how um, we've grown, we've grown with them and to be able to engage and interact with, with other companies in that way um, to be able to grow our supply chain we grow um, the herb calendula for all of our products and so we've been really been able to um, elevate the the farmer community in growing our own training farmers and then partnering partnering with other farms so growing soil as a way for our products to also increase uh, you know their uh, their um, amplification or how far out they are um, and then also uh, through our, our initial nonprofit partner was 1% for the planet. Mm. So um, that's 1% uh, of all revenue we give to nonprofit organizations. And we've grown some great relationships through that uh, organization and, and through the partners we've developed through there. So I would say just in a lot of ways, 
one of the intentions we had from the start was to really make sure that that we kept the things that were important to us um, the same or even further amplify them as we've grown so in that way looking back i see that we really have been able to expand what we started with um, and of course made a bunch of funny you know kind of bumbles and fumbles along the way but ultimately besides the exact like day-to-day -day of what i do things a lot of it looks pretty similar other than we're doing things a lot better than we used to <laughs> well I, I i love that you mentioned the the commitment uh to sticking with many of the things that that you wanted to uh from day one i i picked up in, I think it's your, your like welcome address of the 1% for the planet annual summit. We were actually slated. Our, our team at Grow Ensemble was to go this year. Uh, sadly that that's postponed obviously, but um, in that you said that, that all good uh, has focused on organic growth, probably uh, um, with that not being the primary focus, but rather focusing on being a better company first and foremost, and letting that kind of lead the growth. Uh, um, first and foremost. And so it seems, you know, just from your language there that, that that continues or that rings true and it has rung true throughout the, the trajectory of uh, how the company has evolved. Um, and, yeah, and I mean, it's a kind of a classic uh, Yvonne Chouinard quote, which is just mm. um, every environmental decision ends up being a good bottom line decision. Mm. And that's been validated for me consistently throughout this business is when we take the high road and choose the way to do something that feels right and feels good and feels like it's the way to support people and, and, uh, and to be able to, you know, make it sure that it stays true to our vision, that people are inspired to live in balance with nature, that ultimately it ticks us up on the, um, on the side of the chart too. So it's just an interesting uh, way to navigate it without having to feel bad about it, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, and I mean, to that even further, like look, looking through all the, the commitments of all good, especially as you mentioned there, 1% um, for the planet members, certified B Corporation, uh, an extremely uh, large commitment to, to using nothing but the best in your products or, or uh, with your ingredients in your products. And then as well, I saw y'all have made a commitment to become um, carbon neutral, certify as, as climate neutral. Uh, everything there is indicating to me that that uh, y'all have had a commitment to not just be a sustainable business, but really be a regenerative business, uh, one that that leaves its environment and the communities it engages with better <laughs> after. And, and mm -hmm. so I'm I'm curious to hear from you. Um, one, if if that rings true, and and two, maybe you know uh, um, what 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 do you feel like is uh, you know, in your perspective now, this evolving role of business in this, you know, kind of greater fight to, to address many of these uh, super pressing issues, especially as it relates to our environment. But what, what do you think is the role of business in this moment in, in all good specifically? Well, I think one of the pieces is, is for business to, to be reconnected to humanity, because mm -hmm. I think that that's something that's really gotten lost along the way is that when you think of a business, you think of whether you think of a product or systems in place, but ultimately that business is made up of individuals and the impact that that business has is on individuals. So mm -hmm. it's such a simple thing to me. And when you, when you use the word regenerative, um, you know, there's so many different angles and ways that that word has kind of become a, uh, a real common phrase right now. Mm -hmm. But one of the pieces that I think does get forgotten in that is that that importance of, of developing personal agency within a business so that the people are uplifted and ultimately uh, ha have the opportunity to evol evolve their own capacity to see what is going to be um, a really positive impact both on their environment around them and the people around them. So I think that's it. And then when I think about a business right now for all good, um, I mean, man, everything is so broken all around us right now. And I don't mean that in, to be so negative, but it's kind of can't be ignored, right? I mean, mm. we're just like in the middle of this pandemic. We've had this incredible uplifting awareness of civil rights and a civil, basically like a civil uprising based on super gnarly, you know, series of events, whether you look at four months or 400 years. And so um, to me, business is... I believe has the responsibility to play a role to elevate the platform on all of those issues so that we can 
weave together a better sense of humanity and a better connectivity between who we are as people and how that impacts, um, you know, to borrow the, um, uh, the, uh, the concept of, uh, of how it's going to impact for seven generations from now. Mm. So, yeah, I think that's our, that's our role. And, and so then maybe getting a little bit more specific, how does that then affect what is your, your strategic decision-making for what are the, the company's highest priorities and this team that you've, you've really evolved into a family and like where, how, how is that factoring into your decision-making? Um, yeah. So for this year, for right now, um, some of it's about basic survival um, mm. and just making sure we're taking care of, um, of everybody who's involved in what we're doing so that we can continue to grow. Um, and then from a product perspective and from an educational perspective, uh, it's our responsibility to make sure we're due, dil- due diligence on what are the safest ingredients out there, what is the most responsible sourcing, how can we connect individuals to products for their body on a daily use, daily need um, that are going to um, be you know, the best for them and best for their bodies, but also the best for, um, for any kind of uh, interaction with the environment of where it would be impacted. So if you want to look at sunscreens, for example, we're dedicated to mineral sunscreens um, because we like to have science lead industry and science has shown us that um, zinc oxide is the safest active ingredient in sunscreens and to uh, has also shown us that it's really important to avoid um, active chemical sunscreens that are endocrine disruptors and cause harm in the human body, as well as bleach and kill coral reefs um, and potentially lots of other aquatic uh, life in marine and um, freshwater environments. So that's just one example where we dedicate ourselves to, um, to making sure that we're, we're making the cleanest products there. Um, and then, you know, from an educational perspective, uh, back to our vision of inspiring people to live in balance with nature, um, making sure that uh, people are aware of opportunities to connect to the outdoors or to connect to nonprofits that are taking care of uh, protecting land and protecting critical habitat for plants and animals. And then another one this year for us that's really important um, relative to our essence of of wanting to open and keep uh, conversations kind of growing in a positive and intellectual way to uh, help support this democracy mm. in a form of participation. So we, we feel really strongly that democracy is a participation, it's not a spectator sport. So we would like to um, make sure that there is a um, as much possible prevention of any disenfranchisement or of any lack of of uh, voting or or any potential dishonesty around the voting process. So we're going to engage on that level with some nonprofit partners and just through our own avenues as well. Mm. It, it's certainly an extremely important moment uh, at at this time. And are, are there particular? Maybe it's along those lines. But are there other companies in this space at this moment or as well nonprofit organizations, not necessarily in the space of, uh, uh, of voter disenfranchisement, but generally speaking, uh, that you're, you're really inspired by or that you are as well tracking, maybe it's amongst the communities of 1% for the Planet or Certified B Corporation or otherwise. Absolutely, yeah. So one of our member, the member organizations we're a part of is called um, OSC Square. It stands for One Step Closer to an Organic Sustainable Community. And it's a, a body of mostly Bay Area, California businesses, um, but there's a a larger community within that. Um, And the concept is kind of like through humility and grace and also um, a lot of gratitude, really taking steps that that we believe to be the most important in in supporting um, the concept of regeneration and also just Mm -hmm. making business better in general. So within that um, organization, we're members, but the ones there blow me away. I mean, Dr. Bronner's, those mm-hmm. guys are just constantly putting their, um, their, I would consider them an activist company and also just so c- to the core in authenticity. Mm-hmm. And along those same lines, um, Numi T and um, Guayaki, those are big ones, Sambazon, 
uh, yeah, those are a handful of companies I would say that I that I kind of lean on for as mentors and, and the radical work that they do and how uh, they're also put their consumers first no matter what. You know, they, mm-hmm. they make these incredible products and and sell them and their growth does isn't impacted by their how good they are. So great mm-hmm. companies, Lotus Foods. I mean, I could go on. You know, so many. <laughs> The, the list is endless uh, for sure. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm interested to know of you thinking about yourself as a, a impact driven entrepreneur and the, and the leader of, of all good products. Like where, where do you feel like you personally are looking to evolve as a, a means to, to better serve your team and, and better serve uh, this greater community with, with all good? Uh, like on a like deep personal level. Sure. Um, like what, what, what perhaps are yeah. maybe some, some weaknesses or, or things that you've, you've wanted to uh, focus on personally? Well, yeah. I, I mean, in general, I'm always looking to grow um, my uh, sort of uh, ability to, to stay calm and stay present and stay happy because <laughs> I think being calm and present and happy is a, a great way to, to uh, model what our brand is all about and what our our community, our, our family of our employees is all about. And so that takes practice. Um, so there's opportunity for growth there always, whether it's a daily practice of meditation or in deeper engagement with our team on, um, on fun activities um, and uh, all the things that are good for us, act, act, outdoor activity and yoga and, um, and uh, just taking taking time away from the things that that are that feel like they're important, but are actually just our to do list, right? <laughs> um, and I have two small children, so I'm also always working to be uh, a better mother and uh, and being able to give freely and openly to them, and also um, teach interdependence and and um, resilience. Mm. And I, I guess following along that a bit, uh, because I, I co-founded Grow Ensemble with my fiance, uh, and so we work on this together. So I'm interested to hear a bit of maybe some some recommendations or advice on on working with your partner. What, what has that been like? And, and any things? Oh, here we go. This is one of my favorite questions. I mean, <laughs> it's such a good question because. I, that's really cool. You guys were doing it together. Often what I hear from people is, whoa, you work with your <laughs> husband? Like I could never work with my husband. And I think that's just true. Some relationships are better built for separation between work and home life or work and play or whatever. Mm. But um, Ryan and I have so much fun working together. <laughs> and I started this company. Uh, he was always there like on those road trips I talked about. Um, he'd be like, okay, yeah, we can stop at the show or stop store before we go do fun stuff. Um, and he was always there to support as I was with his business, which was farming. Mm. Um, and he, he jumped on board with all good in 2008. So when we were a couple of years in, and I remember very distinctly the conversation that we had, that was going to be that shift for him joining, we were going to join forces together. And it went like this. Number one, our relationship comes first, no matter what. Mm. So business, who cares? Ultimately, I think like your partnership and your family and your, you know, your human relationship stands way above business. So if it's not working, we have to be committed to our relationship first. And whatever that means, we can navigate our way out of being partners in business or figure it out but being dedicated to that communication point mm. with the shared priority that your relationship is first, I think is, is number one. And then the second one that we said was that each of us holds, holds the cards to uh, cut off conversation about business at any point. Mm. So, you know, it can, it, business can seep into the bedroom. It can seep in to, you know, if you go for a run together or car drives or, Um, breakfast table whatever it has there's always a tendency for that to default toward what is our everyday action and engagement right but we each hold the card which is just this it's the it's that op it's that get out of jail and free and uh i don't even have to 
um, explain, but I can just say, I can't talk about that right now. Mm. And it doesn't even matter. It, be, it could be because like, you know, I have a headache or it could be because I just had a super hard call in a whole other part of the business that I can't really like let go of. Or it could be because I'm so relaxed and just having fun and I don't even want to go there. <laughs> but um, those are the two, I think, most important things. Relationship first and give yourself, give each other the permission to not, not engage if, uh, without judgment, you know, if you want to. And um, so we set those two right out of the gate. We had, we had spent a lot of time together before we got married. Like I told you, we were together for eight years. Mm -hmm. So we knew each other really well. We've done really fun little random business things together. Like we spent a half a year in South America and brought back duffels of textiles that we sold at <laughs> festivals. So we had done stuff like that. So we kind of knew each other and we had done a bunch of value add products. Like um, we made applesauce from our apple trees and sold it at uh, festivals. And then we, <laughs> I mean, we've just like done like funny little like one-offs for entrepreneur stuff. So we knew we could do that part together. But once it became a full-time thing, those two uh, boundaries that we set were um, the best things we could have done. And I think it's kept it going really well. Mm. Yeah. Well, what uh, <laughs> excellent advice, first and foremost. So, so thank you for that. <laughs> But what, where, where's the, the complementary skill sets with, with y'all? Like why, why has it, uh, obviously those kind of ground rules are so critically important. Um, but what is Ryan really good at uh, that you maybe aren't in, in vice versa? Yeah, this would be a funny question for my employees because I think they might answer it better. <laughs> but my analogy is that like if we're records, um, Ryan's a 45 and I'm a 33. So he's just, you know, super fast out of the gate, ready to just charge and get something done. I'm a little more pause and take a look at things and consider the mm. consequences. <laughs> um, <laughs> but he runs sales mm. and that's a perfect set of, set of uh, skill set characteristics for running sales. It's mm. just like he, he's got... Um, perseverance and he's he just you know endless amount of dedication and ready to to just charge and stay charging and i'm a little bit more like oh okay i'm seeing that those people over there feel a little hesitant so they might need a little tlc mm. and uh you know some uh some stuff dropped off the van over there that actually needs to get picked up and put in recycling and so i'm kind of like more just like monitor the overall scene and he's like go straight through make it happen <laughs> so um, that, those are our different skill sets and and definitely it comes out in really funny ways <laughs> we have we have certain uh like product development is one place where we overlap quite a bit and so our um our uh our product development diva gets to see that a lot of times where he's like let's watch it now and go for it and i'm like whoa 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 um so it's uh it's a good balance <laughs> Um, I, I'm just like connecting with some, what seem to be some similar dynamics uh, on our side, just different speeds for sure. Uh, and uh, so I'm, Which I'm, one are you? Uh, I'm more of the, the slow, I, I think uh -huh. more of the, the reflective. Yeah. She, she's uh, much faster than I am. Good. So that, I mean, that's the cool thing to know that I think is key because then you can play those up and amplify those and recognize them and, and then also find your places Find, make sure your roles are clear so that you can help support the your best skills in those roles. Mm, definitely. And, and, and so, uh, Caroline, before we wrap up with some rapid fire questions, one more, uh, maybe a little more open-ended. Uh, I'm interested now looking back this 14, 15 years with All Good, what, what are some of your favorite maybe surprises about how the, the business has taken shape the community around it, maybe the team. What are some things that you most pleasantly surprised about? And, and maybe when you started it, couldn't imagine happening. I think just attracting the people that we have, whether it's through partners or we have a board of advisors and uh, the people who've said yes to come on board and be in the, um, in the trenches with us has mm. always surprised me every single time. Like, well, <laughs> um, they're gonna hang out with us. That's amazing, we're so lucky. We've surrounded ourselves with really smart, really great people. Um, and that's always been a surprise. Um, 
And then I think just how much fun it is is always a surprise because <laughs> it's really hard. A lot of the times it's really hard, but um, but being able to to scrape out the fun and and to continue to merge play with work has been a good surprise. Um, yeah, I think those are it. And and you and I would say also like from like um, our banking partners, we bank with a B Corp beneficial bank, beneficial state bank, mm -hmm. and. Um, our lending partner is RSF Social Finance, a nonprofit, um, Rudolf Steiner Foundation, like kind of Waldorf uh, rooted uh, lending partner. And just the, the, the humility I feel in that those companies um, and those lending institutions believe in us and, and want to continue to work with us and allow to align financial level with such mission driven organizations mm. is like a surprise and really rad really cool hmm. yeah those are a few love it see so all right with a, a couple quick hit questions before we tie sure. in. so first a, a pretty classic podcast question is w what's a book that you always come back to or maybe one that's impacted you recently that you'd like to recommend i'll recommend carol sanford all of her books um, and, uh, the most, the one that I refer to the most is called the regenerative business. Mm. Just came across that title like the other day. That's so weird. That's fine. <laughs> now it means I have to read it. You do. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I'll send uh, you a copy. Please do. Please do. Um, okay. and uh, are there any particular morning routines or daily habits that you absolutely have to stick with? Um, morning routine is meditation before I get out of bed. And even if it's just a minute or five minutes is, uh, is key to set the tone for the day. Um, and then some sort of anything that gets the blood moving, a little sweat on the brow, a little mm. exercise is, is uh, crucial. Mm. And so you, you mentioned how important this, this play was. I'm, I'm curious, what, what are some of the, the hobbies or enthusiasms that uh, you keep up with outside of all goods work? I really like mountain biking in the summers. Uh, I really like skiing in the winters, um, kite surfing in the spring and the fall. Mm. And, um, and I, I was an avid rock climber and, and business kind of took that away a little bit, but now my littles, my little girls are getting into it. So um, uh, it's been really fun to get back on the rock with them and, and help support them learning how to rock climb. So mm. those are our, all of our fun activities we like to do. And uh, do you all still have a van? We do. We, <laughs> we got rid of the Ford E350 diesel, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> and now uh, we, we, have a, we have a sprinter that works well. It's just, got a, it's just a big shell, so we can throw pallets back there or mountain bikes or uh, all good, you know, goop oil production jars or whatever. It's just uh, it, it carries anything and everything. Awesome. I'm waiting and, for the electric one though. When's that I coming know. out? Let's get, let's get an electric sprinter. I, I, Volkswagen, I think is the first one. There was like this promo for the electric van and my fiance and I, we, we have a, a small kind of compact cargo van ourselves. And that's, we like looked, Googled for it. And it was like coming out in, you know, 20, 28 or whatever. Like, shit, like that's too, way too long. Don't even run this ad right now. Yeah, still, exactly. I don't know. It's just far off. It was way too far off for, for me to feel like, oh, it's right around the corner. At, at I least. think the trucks are going to be first. And so we might have to just convert the truck into a van. That's true. Something. Well, there we go. Um, all right. And last final question. Are there any uh, uh, pieces of advice that you'd maybe give to uh, a, a purpose-driven business founder who's in an early stage company, maybe in the first few years, uh, first few years of, of all good like you were? um stick with it <laughs> and uh i like to say i like to say um think about choosing what you want your day to look like mm. because um i didn't really care that much and so growing a business worked really easily because it, everything i did every day changed a lot but mm. i've seen a lot of people lose the passion for what they were doing because once you're actually rolling with your business you know you're not necessarily going to be doing on a daily basis what your passion is mm. so i think it's important to just know what you want to be spending your days doing mm. 
really good advice to, to end on. All right, Caroline, I, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, Corey. You too. It's such a joy to talk with you. Look forward to more.